In this video, let's go take a look at manage prefix lists. So um, I believe this would be under VPC. If it's not, it'll be under EC2. And we'll take a look and see if we can find it. So here it is on the left-hand side, manage prefix list. And you'll notice that there is a bunch of different prefix lists that are produced by AWS already. So we have VPC Lattice, Health Checks, Ground Station, DynamoDB, S3. And the idea is that um, by allowing uh, these, we can allow traffic uh, to uh, uh, flow between these. If we are using security groups, I'm sure there's other use cases for managed prefix lists, which I probably detail in the lecture content, but where it's gonna actually be something that is actionable right away is probably gonna be in US East 1 because there are very specific managed prefix lists um, in this one that we could utilize. So if we go over here for a moment, you're gonna notice that we have uh, ones for and I'm just looking for it. We should see CloudFront. So if we wanted to only allow stuff from CloudFront, we could utilize that. So let's go take a look at what that would look like in terms of security group. We're not gonna do a full blown example because it's just not worth our time. But I just wanna show you, we could say only allow um, CloudFront. And yeah, we'll just have it for this VPC here. And the idea is that we can go ahead and from this list choose existing prefix list. So notice it's showing everything from US East 1. Um, I don't know if you could use this across in different regions. That might be something that might be interesting to test because what if you wanted to allow cr uh, CloudFront from another origin? So we'll go ahead and create this. And we'll just put the same description here. Okay, so we've created that. We'll give this a nice refresh. And, oh, we set it for the outbound rule. It would have made more sense to set it up for the inbound rule, but here we say the destination is any of those outbound addresses. What I wanna do is just do a, a quick sanity check um, before we do anything else. I'm gonna just edit the outbound rule. I wanna copy this value here because I wanna see what if we can access that in uh, a cross region. I don't think we could, but um, it'd be interesting to just give it a test and find out. So I'm gonna go ahead back over to CA Central 1. I'm gonna go and create myself a new security group and call it my um, cross account um, prefix list. And we'll go down below here. And I wanna see if I can paste that in. And so it looks like I, I can. Uh, if I clear this out, does it actually provide the one? It does. So even though that list exists in US East 1, it is accessible here in uh, other regions. So that is uh, very useful. I think that's enough of a demonstration to show how managed prefix lists work. You can make your own. I don't have much of a use case for making my own or showing, showing you those ones, but the idea is that if you wanted to, I suppose we could take a look really quickly. You can make your own managed prefix list and then from here, you would specify IPv4 addresses. So my prefix list. And we say my prefix list. And I'm just seeing, yeah, we'll say IPv4. Oh, max entries, the number. Um, number of entries, we'll say five. And the idea is, I guess you'd have to enter them in, right? So you say this one. That one, again, I don't do this uh, very often, so I'm just putting in whatever just to show that we can make our own. But you know, if you had a bunch of uh, specific IP addresses, you could put those in there that you trust um, that might be for legacy systems that you want to uh, quickly use. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much prefix in a nutshell, nothing too complicated, but we will see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.